Good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, wherever and whenever you're watching this session. Welcome to the Low Code, No Code Conference. Um, and I would like to talk to you a little bit today about my journey with Low Code, No Code, and the citizen development journey at Mantron. My name is Lori Breitbart. I'm a senior IT program manager with the ServiceNow platform team at Medtronic. I have been at Medtronic for over 20 years and um, with the IT industry for about 35. I have been in various roles, development, business analyst, a manager, and a program manager. Medtronic is a global life sciences company. Um, we are very proud that within the last year, Medtronic therapies have improved and restored the lives of more than 72 million people. That's two people every second. Um, and we are proud to be innovative and helping people. We are a very global company. We operate in about 150 countries, probably. Um, I think we have facilities in about the same number of countries. We are, have 74 manufacturing sites around the world and 19 distribution sites, headquarters in both Minneapolis, Minnesota, and Bethlehem, Ireland. So a little bit about the citizen developer journey at Medtronic um, and what, what caused us to really need or start seeking solutions um, with the citizen developer program. Basically, as you can see here, the, is the trend over time. Our low-code, no-code development tool is ServiceNow. And the trend over time was that we were increasing, um, if not sustaining, demand um, rapidly as time went on. So because of that sustained de increase in demand from the organization, um, customers were seeking agility and faster implementation types than we could deliver with our, um, what I would say, rather tiny. Team um, at, at um, Medtronic in the ServiceNow space. Um, they, they wanted more than we could provide. And of course, they wanted it faster than we could provide it with our internal developer resources because our internal developer resources have to prioritize demand across all things that are being asked, not just for a specific business process or business customer. Um, we turned to external resources for more capacity to do more, um, but we found that they can be very expensive. And despite the amount of um, transition, knowledge transition you perform, um, some of the knowledge trust within Medtronic was still missing to build upon the solutions that the external developers had delivered. At Medtronic, a citizen developer is someone who uses our ServiceNow tools to build application. Again, ServiceNow is our low-code, no-code app. They adhere to some best practices and some development standards, which are maintained by the platform team, which is really our center of excellence around the tool set of ServiceNow. And they follow a standard release calendar. Since ServiceNow is a shared space, it's important that we keep all of the people who are developing things on it going at the same pace and then I'd also like to talk to you a little bit about um, the low-code, no-code developer experience. I am, um, I am the first citizen developer on the ServiceNow platform at Medtronic. And the reason I entered into citizen development was because I had an interest, but I also had a customer who was coming to me. They needed some business functionality. They had some deadlines. And our resources that were available to us were just not able to um, provide what they needed in the time frame that they needed it. So I stepped in. Um, some of the most common asks of things that we get for building out some low-code, no-code applications are business requests. You'd be surprised how many of our um, our business areas are still using resource inboxes through Outlook to manage their requests, leaving them not able to answer the very, very um, basic questions like how many requests am I getting and how long is it taking for me to resolve them and am I indeed resolving them all? 
Some of the things um, that I would recommend or tips that I have for citizen development, or you could say that this slide is really things I wish I knew when I started, um, is to partner with people who know the tool sets you're using. You'll struggle less if you have a partner, someone who you can go to who really understands the tool sets in depth to ask questions of and to kind of point you in the right direction as to what um, particular features and functions you should be using to deliver what it is that you're you're wanting to live. Or I call this the, I get by with a little help from my friends, which I certainly did as a citizen developer. The other thing I would recommend is sort of to plan before you build. So if you plan, at least have a general plan of what it is that you're trying to build. Um, it's easier to build to something that you have this plan in mind than it is to kind of start off and then maybe have to turn around and fix things. It's less complicated and more straightforward if you begin with the end in mind. And then the other thing I would say is don't boil the ocean um, with your first release. Start small and um, really understand what it, the foundational pieces are that you need to get you started with being able to support this business process. You'll have some absolutely fantastic ideas. I did, or at least I thought that they were fantastic. Um, but But make sure that you start with the basic building blocks and then set a vision and a purpose for your application. So if you understand the business process and the business area that you're trying to enable, and usually in citizen development, that is the case because you are um, from that business area, then really having a vision and purpose for your app will keep you from taking um, running down different rabbit holes to deliver things just because you can, not necessarily because they are fitting a basic need. The other tip that I have, and I really strongly believe on this, is pass the power on. So if you have the ability to allow your end users to do something like configure for accessibility or um, configure certain views that make it more efficient to do specifically what it is that they're trying to do, um, pass that power on into their hands and let them let them um, change up their experience to what is um what is desired in their use case. Outcomes for the business using citizen development. Basically, the business is empowered to assist themselves with their own technology need. Uh, really, citizen development puts the technology into the hands of the people who know the business functions the best. That allows the businesses to own their own roadmap and really plan out their priorities. They can manage the capacity of their citizen developers to achieve the features that are most important to them. And then I think this really enhances user experience. So the user experience is in the hands of someone who really understands how the business works or the business process works. And I think that results in a better overall user experience for the app itself. Guiding principles and guardrails. So even as a citizen developer, I know that in order to be successful, I really need to partner with somebody who understands the tool sets. And I really want to know, you know, how should I go about this so that I can maintain, um, sustain, upgrade, you know, add new features to my application moving forward. So we've established um, some guidelines and guide rails. Uh, we have different maturity levels for our citizen developers, uh, no code, low code, and pro code. And we really rely on sort of these three pillars for enabling our citizen developer and supporting them from a platform team perspective. So we rely on vendor training, basically ServiceNow has training and certification uh, for people to learn how to use ServiceNow. Um, and we have a onboarding with the platform team or the center of excellence in this case, that is specific to what this app, these app tools look like and what they can do at Medtronic. We have a set of responsibilities that they agree um, to uphold. And then on our platform governance, we also have, as far as those guide rails, 
Um, we only allow people to build the applications or do their configurations, but promoting it into UAT and, to, and into production is something that this ServiceNow um, platform team does um, so that we can do some official reviews and, and reviewing the test results and things before anything moves into production work that affect other things. We have a system developer process. I am not going to make you read this. In fact, I can't read it myself. It's an eye chart, even for me on the small screen that I have. So I just want to point out here that we do have a process. It is documented so that our citizen developers can understand it and can follow it and reference it. The results and takeaways of our citizen development program at Medtronic. Customers, like I mentioned a couple of times already, they love being able to own their own roadmap and prioritize um, their own things that are important to them. Um, they can decide if one of their resources is going to work on this, this project, this business-related project, or if that person has, has a citizen developer, maybe they want to allocate 20 hours a week. So they own their own capacity. They own their own priority. They can tell their end users when to expect features, et cetera. And they absolutely love that. This one, uh, the second one was an eye opener to me when I finally ran the statistics. And again, this is just in the first year where our program was um, not as mature and where our citizen developers were newbies themselves. But 56% of all the requests for things inside of ServiceNow and inside of the applications were fulfilled by citizen developers just in that first year of the program. So without them, essentially, we would have been able to deliver a little less than half of what was actually delivered in that year. And that was a huge bonus for all of us. And the, the last um, thing I think that is important to share as a result, those citizen developers have become our agents of change around low code, no code. So they are the evangelist in our case, ServiceNow evangelist, but in your case, it might be another tool set. And they are the grassroots um, cheerleaders for low code, no code, and uh, for owning and being able to enable their own technology. Benefits from a business lens, in this case, it was our platform lens because this was a goal of ours, but it really is for all businesses. We are showing here the trend of hours, development hours that we had available, development hours we could do, and the cost per hour of that development. So the orange line is definitely, in my opinion, going in the right way, right? We are delivering more now for much less than we were able to. There's been some other factors that influence this, certainly, but citizen development is a huge part of it. And lessons learned and future planned plans. So I talked a lot about the guardrails. It's important for us to enable our citizen developers, but not forget those um, guardrails or guide rails that help point them toward the path to success. Um, we also learned that you need to be available as subject matter experts or as um, uh, process guidance. Be available as much as you can to the citizen developers. We have an open house weekly where you can come visit with our architect or some of our other team members if you have questions about really anything related to the no code, low code, no code tool. And then automate as much as possible. We have automated um, uh, using a utility to test that will tell you if you follow best practices or make recommendations for things that you might be able to do differently. That has been huge. It puts the uh, testing and sort of that initial review into the hands of the citizen developers themselves. And then it's important really to have visibility for the platform team or for the COE across all the work that is being done using your low-code, no-code platform. This will help prevent um, the spread of applications, um, maybe Susan is working on something over here that is very similar um, to what Praveen is working on over here, and um, they're just not aware of it. You can bring that together and say, with some configuration and separation, can we work together? And you guys, if you work together, you can make a more feature, feature rich application and deliver one application experience. Future plans that we have, expand. We want to be able to have more citizen developers and more resources available for our citizen developers. We want to enable them to start with a build. So in the past, 
citizen developers have really taken over after an application has been delivered to continue to deliver new features. We want to be able to let them build new apps that they might need in their space. Um, again, we want to simplify the processes. We don't want to become a speed bump with our guide rails um, on their road to agility. So automating things like code moves, um, deployment into production, things like that are stuff that we are looking into and really want to be able to provide. And then we are looking forward to some of the new features that are going to be provided in the low-code, no-code application to apply more granularity and automate some of the guardrails or the guide rails that we have set up. So that's a little bit about my journey as a low-code, no-code developer and as a member of the platform team um, or center of excellence for um, ServiceNow's low-code, no-code. I want to thank you very much for having spent the time today and hope that you enjoy the rest of your sessions um, at the low-code, no-code conference.